So how can we determine experimentally the amount of enthalpy something has? Like how much enthalpy does this cat have? Well, that's tricky. We're going to use an experimental uh, technique called calorimetry. You know, when you look at uh, nutrition information about anything you eat, and you look at the first thing that's uh, indicated is the number of calories. Well, calories is just another way of measuring energy. So somehow, industry has been able to tell us of those yummy Cheetos you eat, how many calories you will have uh, consumed, in this case, if you ate 55 grams. So there must be a way that industry um, uses to determine the amount of energy or enthalpy that substances have. They use what is called a calorimeter. Well, a calorimeter is just a fancy device that determines the amount of energy indirectly that a substance has. Here's a picture of a calorimeter. Let's say I wanted to know how much energy this Cheeto has. But well, what I could do is I could burn the Cheeto completely, transfer all the energy from the Cheeto into some water, and indirectly determine the amount of energy from the, wa from the water. So let's take the Cheeto. I'm going to put it into this sealed bomb. I'm going to light it on fire. Okay, and then as it burns, all of the energy from the Cheeto will get 100% transferred into the water. If I happen to know the mass of the water, and the specific heat capacity of the water, and the change of temperature of the water, I can determine the energy that that Cheeto had. So I can indirectly determine the delta H because the energy lost from the Cheeto equals the energy gained from the water, which is the first law of thermodynamics. So that's what the calorimeter uses. Okay, first off, it has to be an isolated system. It's an isolated system, if you recall, has no exchange of matter and energy, so that all of the energy lost from that Cheeto was gained by the water. It's going to use the principle of the first law of thermodynamics, that heat lost equals heat gained. And using this system, you'll be able to set up for success any calculations you try. So a reaction is complete or completed in a chamber which either releases energy or absorbs energy. This chamber is surrounded by water, and using MC delta T, the enthalpy can be calculated. Of course, in a high school, we don't have these fancy bomb calorimeters. These are used in industry to determine calories of foodstuffs. What we're going to use are called simple calorimeters. So simple calorimeters work just fine, um, but they cost a lot less, and this is what they look like. They're really just two styrofoam cups nestled together with water in the middle. Obviously, if you see there's water inside, we can't be burning anything. So simple calorimeters are not going to be using combustion reactions. So we have, they're made of two styrofoam cups that are nested together. They could be used to quantify the enthalpy of non-combustion reactions. As I said, no fire, but we will consider reactions such as neutralization, which like is an acid and a base reacting together, precipitation, which means forming a solid precipitate from two aqueous solutions, or dissolving, and just dissolving an ionic compound can either absorb or release heat. A couple things we have to keep in mind though when we're dealing with simple calorimeters and solutions is we're going to make some assumptions. Here are the assumptions we're going to make. First, because water is the main solvent for any of our solution reactions, we're going to assume that the density of whatever reaction mixture occurs and the specific heat capacity for whatever, whatever reaction occurs is the same as water. Okay? That means for your MC delta T calculations, we're going to assume that one milliliter is equal to one gram. That's the density of water. So if the question said 200 milliliters, you will say in your mind that is equivalent to 200 grams of water. And you will also assume that the specific heat capacity of whatever that reaction mixture is, is the same of water, which is 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. That is necessary for the calculation, which we, I will demonstrate in the next podcast.